It's been a while, but here I am. Anyways, there's this manga I want to talk about called Will You Be My Cute Crossdresser by Mitohi Matsumoto. Now, on the cover, it really just shows the wind flicking up this guy's skirt revealing his pantsu, but there is a bit of bulgy wolgy in that, and I just don't want to get this video age-restricted, so you guys gotta use your imagination. Although, I would like to point out that the color palette for his outfit is blue, pink, and white. Now, this might be referencing the trans flag, but I might just be looking a little too far into it. However, there's a related manga called Club for Crossdressers that has the color pink, white, and blue also prominent on the cover, so just something to think about. So, this manga consists of three short stories. The one I'm going to be focusing on is the longest one, and is also the one that the cover art is based off of. The first story is titled, 10 Things You Want to Do With Your Girlfriend, and it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. Now, the version of this I read was the Project H physical copy, and I wasn't able to find a digital version of this, so the version I'm showing you actually doesn't have any type of paralogue or final chapter, and the text is slightly different. So like if when I quote a character or explain what's being said, it might not line up exactly with what you see on screen, but if you want to verify what I'm saying, then you can try to get your hands on the Project H version. I think it's still on Amazon. Since the paralogue and final chapter are also exclusive to the Project H hard copy for all I know, I'll show you related pics of what's happening. Now, just to clarify, um, with the exception of the prologue and the final chapter, I actually do have the slightly different pages and stuff. Now, for the paral prologue and the final chapter for the prologue, I'm just going to do related pictures, and for the final chapter, I'll just show um, other pages from the story that I didn't already show in the video. The story starts off with seven guys who can't seem to get any women, and this section seems like it's speaking directly on behalf of many disenfranchised men. Now, the reason why I'm assigning such importance to the mere premise of a short story is two reasons. The first is how relatable it is for likely readers of the story. Manga, especially of this kind, isn't really read by what you would call alpha chads, or even most normies for all intents and purposes. It's more a specific niche that this manga seems to appeal to, and this instantly gets the reader's attention now. This may sound simple, but you'd be surprised how much media doesn't grab the consumer's attention. Now, I really wish I had the digital pages of this section, so you wouldn't have to jump through hoops to verify it, but some of the things they said were, I can't believe I was turned down because I'm short, or just once, I want to see what it's like to be popular, and I just want to make out with a cute girl. Now, had these originally not been published in Japanese, I would suspect that they ripped these lines straight off 4chan's R9K board. The second reason why I'm assigning such importance to just the mere premise is believability. This story is about ordinary guys who attempt to rectify a very common problem while still making things interesting. Yes, there always needs to be some type of suspension of disbelief when it comes to consuming media. However, that suspension is not unlimited. There are countless times where something in media happens that just makes me want to call bullshit or some tremendous ass pull that they try to stitch together from poor writing. So, after the guys lament, they implement their plan to rectify the issue. They decide to turn one of them into a girl, or a trap depending on how you view things. And once made into a girl, the first thing Ikumi says is, the, This is me? This shows that he has abandoned his former identity of a lonely guy and acquired a new one as a cute girl. The next day rolls forth. It started off with one of the guys commenting on how cold it is. Now, I may be looking too deep into this, but the cold weather could be symbolizing the cold and harsh world that these guys are trying to navigate. And this is actually confirmed when, in response to a guy complaining about being single, a guy said, don't say that, it'll only make us feel colder. We're then brought to a scene where the guys are helping shave Ikumi. Despite already being dressed in feminine clothing and having makeup put on, further work still needs to be done in order to make Ikumi look like a cute girl. This adds to the believability of the scene. It would be quite naspal if a guy just turned into a cute girl at the snap of a finger, so I gotta praise Matsumoto for actually showing that things take work. Matsumoto could have easily elected to not have this scene, but he decided to do things properly. So, Ikumi, the guy who's being feminized, isn't very confident in the plan and is having second thoughts about it, so Kirahara, who's the ringleader of this, helps assuage Ikumi's concerns and gets him to consent to this. 
Kirahara does this by telling Ikumi that he'd be more popular with the girls if he'd become cuter, and he may even be hit on, so... This statement alone is based on the fact that women, or at least individuals who appear to be women, typically do better in developed egalitarian societies. So, their plan is to share Ikumi and do things with him that they would have done with a normal girl. Now, some of these guys were tasked with helping out and others with preparations, and they have to buy stuff. And surprisingly, they're extremely happy to. One of them even says, Having a girlfriend does cost money, after all. It's like we're living a fulfilling life. And this requires no explanation for what it represents in the real world. On with their first activity, they are making Valentine's chocolates, and Ikumi is wearing nothing but a cute apron. I'm sure a lot of guys would love to do this with their girlfriend or wife. However, I'm sure that a lot of guys who are even in a relationship would have a partner who would be extremely reluctant or unwilling to do this. But this story is a great source of escapism as Ikumi just goes right along with it. Later, after the chocolates are made, Ikumi has a new outfit on, stockings and a long sweater. Seems pretty cute, but nothing of any significance. However, a comment that one of the guys made caught my attention. It happens when Kirahara pulls up Ikumi's sweater to reveal that there's a skirt underneath it. Now, this is a nod to a preference that some guys have. You see, girls sometimes take a long shirt or sweater and then wear it as a dress. Many guys appreciate this kind of look. Hell, I even give my OC that kind of look. It's references and nods like this that are quite subtle, but still make this manga quite good when you pick up on them. So, Ikumi ends up eating too much of the sweets and ends up putting on a little bit of flab. Kirahara reprimands him for this. This is a conflict that sometimes happens between men and their female partners. Maybe not so much in America where like 20% of 18 to 24 year olds are overweight, but definitely in Japan. Anyways, this shows that Kirahara is starting to see Ikumi as an actual girl. Another thing that added to Kirahara being upset was the sizing adjustments that had to be made, which ended up delaying their plans. This is also typically a girl thing as most guys just tend to throw whatever clothes on without giving it much thought. During their next activity, Kirahara tells Ikumi that he can leave his wallet at home as the other guys will pay for it. Now, this isn't the first time this happened in the story, and you can start to see a pattern with this, just like real life. Later, one of the guys grabs onto Ikumi and appreciates that he gained a little bit of weight as it makes him feel softer. I don't want to sound redundant, but this interaction between guys and girls also happens in real life. Except, it's not Kirahara, it's Tanabe. This establishes that Kirahara isn't the only one that sees Ikumi as a girl. Another thing that the guys do is have Ikumi dressed as a cute nurse when one of them allegedly gets a cold. So they dress Ikumi in a cute nurse's outfit. They even make a comment about how the skirt is 5 centimeters shorter than the standard one. This is also a great source of escapism as most nurses have long abandoned their feminine outfits and now wear essentially the same outfit as the male nurses do. However, in this escapist fantasy, all the femininity is restored and they even go far beyond that. Tanabe has Ikumi wear a bikini and go to the pool with him. However, at the pool, he reveals to Ikumi that due to past childhood trauma, he's scared of deep water. What's really significant about this is that he's allowing himself to be vulnerable to Ikumi. This is something that guys will sometimes do when they end up getting close to a woman. I mean, at this point, it's safe to assume that all the guys see Ikumi as a girl. So, although Tanabe claims that his plan is to go on a pool date with a girl, he had ulterior motives to also open up to a girl. The next two activities are simply just the escapist fantasies of having a girlfriend that shares the same male-dominated hobbies as they do. Guys who find girls that share male-dominated hobbies are often considered quite lucky as the gamer girlfriend or weeb girlfriend is actually quite sought after. As the story is starting to reach its end, Ikumi reveals that he actually likes being a girl. He said that he likes being wanted by others. This implies that, supplemented with what we saw earlier, Ikumi wasn't really wanted as a guy. He was just disposable trash turned down by girls for just being too short. He may have had an amazing personality, but no one would ever get to know that. However, once Ikumi became a girl, he suddenly became the center of attention. All the guys started revolving around him. Throughout the story, we haven't really seen any biological women. However, I'd assume Ikumi fared much better with them as if when he was a girl than when he was a guy. Nothing noteworthy happens in the final scene. Everything just wraps up nicely. Despite how deep I've looked into this manga, it's still a pretty light and easy read. You can read it for the story, or you can just coom to it, whichever you're into. So uh, here's my concluding thoughts on what the big picture is. You see, Ikumi provided what women fail to. The guys tried to find a relationship, but no girl would accept them. Yes, they very well may have been losers with nothing to offer women, but that doesn't dissolve the fact that they still ended up empty-handed, bereft of the female wonders. But 
Dairy Kumi was, created from an amalgamation of their own desires, there to offer respite. Ikumi may have lacked a moist hole, but he had everything else. Some may say, far better than any actual woman. But that's for you to decide. I'm Otaku King 69 Thanks for watching.